So this is like the, what, millionth and first video for Smash Brothers on the internet? Hope you enjoyed anyway. Man, as if I really need to introduce this series to you guys. Say what you will about Nintendo nowadays, but back in the N64 days, they completely dominated the local multiplayer scene. Just try and argue that. Mario Kart, Mario Party, GoldenEye, Diddy Kong Racing, Snowboard Kids, Perfect Dark, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Bomberman 64, WWF No Mercy, Rugrats Scavenger Hunt! Alright, alright, maybe not that one. But Nintendo had one more trick up their sleeve. It's time for all the characters you know and love to duke it out on the battlefield. Grab your friends, form alliances, band or make enemies, on arenas from all of these great franchises. Or go out on your own and improve your skills in the single player mode. It's a bumpin', bruisin', brawlin' bash? Okay game, <laughs> you're the boss. Nowadays, Super Smash Bros. has kinda taken on a life of its own. Really, anything that happens with Smash now gets a lot of hype behind it just because it's Smash. But the series all begins with the big man himself, Masahiro Sakurai. He created this little guy, the adorable little pink puff Kirby. I'm sure followers of mine are probably sick of hearing me talk about Kirby by now, but yeah, I'm kind of a big fan of Sakurai right from the beginning. But then in 1998, he came up with an idea to make a fighting game with Nintendo characters, but that wasn't always the case. It was originally going to be called Dragon King the Fighting Game, and it was going to be featuring... these guys. I think Sakurai made the better choice to use Nintendo characters. Oh, you want to play as Link? How about Samus, or maybe Green Guy? You know, my dad's uncle's stepfather works for Nintendo, and they actually told me that they're going to try and bring this guy back as DLC for Smash Bros. 4. You can trust me, I'm on the internet. It also kind of helps that the original Smash Bros. has one of the greatest video game commercials of all time. How can you watch this amazing commercial and not just want to dive into the game immediately? Granted, you can almost say that about every gaming commercial in the 90s, but that's an entirely different topic on its own. Alright, I'm done boring you with the history lesson. I'm sure a lot of you guys are already familiar with all this, but it couldn't hurt to talk about it for those of you who don't know. Now, when it comes to Super Smash Bros., this fighting system is pretty much the same thing throughout the entire series. So, before we go into what makes each game unique, let's go into what makes Super Smash Bros. Super Smash Bros. The most obvious thing that makes Super Smash Bros. its own thing is that these aren't just some random fighting characters made for a fighting game. These are Nintendo characters fighting in Nintendo worlds. Have you ever wanted to play as Samus and beat the hell out of Yoshi and Saffron City from Pokemon? Of course you have! And leave it to Nintendo to make it socially acceptable to beat up a little yellow mouse and a small child. Ah, good old Nintendo. Certainly a far cry from their earlier fighting game, Urban Champion- <coughs> Ah, almost kills me just to say that name out loud. The way you fight was really unique for the time, too. The game only has two different types of attacks. There are standards, which mainly attack the area that's right around you, and specials, moves that more so use tools that characters are known for, like Yoshi's tongue, Pikachu's electricity, and Kirby's ability to take in other people's powers, or something you would at least think that they would use, like Fox and his blaster. And then there's just the odd case with Captain Falcon. The guy never once, at the time, stepped foot out of his vehicle, and they decided to make him a total beast and gave him the most memorable move in the entire series. Falcon. Mmm, delicious. You can then combine those two moves with a tilt of the analog stick, minor differences to standard when you're in the air, or perform a standard as you tilt the analog stick for a smash attack for more damage. Then you gotta grab, a shield, and a roll, and there you go. That's how you smash. And since the stages are all based on Nintendo worlds, there are a few gimmicks in place too. In Smash 64, the gimmicks are really tame, so it's mostly about level design, but later on you'll see, sometimes they can get a bit crazy. You also have the option to have items randomly drop during your matches. They can be based on a series, like Pokeballs from Pokemon that will summon a monster to help you out, or something that's created for a Smash, like the Home Run Bat. I'm singling that one out in particular because it's easily my favorite item in the entire series. It is a total pain trying to hit a charged shot from it because of the slow buildup, but if you do... Oh man, it's so good. And lastly, something that was totally unheard of in the realm of fighting games at the time, no life bars. Instead, there are percentage meters. Taking in damage adds to the meter, thereby making you fly back farther when you get hit. Knock a character off the stage in a direction of your choice, dominate the competition, and that is the core basics of Super Smash Bros. Alright, now I'm done boring you with the basics. Let's finally dive right into the series with the first game... Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 64. Alright, I was gonna put this in the N64 here, we got- Oh, wait, sorry, I'm the wrong way. There you go. We got popping the power, and, uh, we're good to go! 
Once you turn the game on, you're treated with just an awesome opening sequence. All of these worlds are finally coming together for one big fight. It just gets you so pumped. Man, it's always so good. Now, one of the main things that Super Smash Bros. is known for nowadays is packing in the entire game with as much content as possible. This one, eh, not so much. Once you get past the title screen, you got four different options. Single player, versus, options, and data. That's it. Welcome to the Nintendo 64, you either get in or you get out. Single player is primarily an arcade styled mode where you go up against a series of solo battles, team battles, and a couple minigames, all finishing off with fights against Metal Mario, a team of fighting polygons, which it's the N64, everything in this game is a fighting polygon. And finally, the ultimate master hand. Yeah, the final boss is an evil hand. I swear, Sakurai is an evil genius and I love it. What's also cool about this game in the series in particular is that the intro implies that Master Hand is a hand of someone playing with their Nintendo toys on their desk, something the series has just never gone back to ever since, which is kind of a shame. Once you finish off the evil Master Hand, you get a cool victory image for your character, zap on through the credits because who the hell doesn't, and then if you did something right during your run, BAM! New challenger approaching. And these moments were always just so awesome. A one-on-one -on -one fight with a character that you don't have yet, each of you with only one life, and if you take them down, they are yours for the taking. So good! And what's kind of funny about it is that Ness and Captain Falcon don't even have a stage to call their own, so they just borrow someone else's. Granted, at the time, I didn't even know who Ness and Captain Falcon were. I hadn't played or even heard of Earthbound or F-Zero at the time, but hey, a small child and a grown man in tights with incredible abs? Sure, it fits in perfectly with the rest of the cast. I, I guess? I also like that Mario is the only series to have two different stages. Always has to be the show-off now, doesn't he? And here, look at Luigi's face. Poor guy doesn't even want to be here. Next up, you got Versus Mode. Here, up to four people or computers can fight in timed matches, where most kills and least deaths win, or stock matches, where each character has a set number of lives, and it's basically just last man standing. And well, that's actually it. You can also get a brief description of every character in the data menu, including the games that they've been in, but really... That's it. I want to keep talking about the game, really I do, but that's all this original one has to offer. Don't get me wrong guys, it's still a solid start to the series, and Smash itself is fun enough so you can argue that you don't even really need all the extra goodies, but the point still stands. Once you unlock all four characters and the Mushroom Kingdom stage, which takes about eh, three hours or so, all replayability is left entirely up to you. But in my opinion, the best thing that Super Smash Bros has going for it is the fact that you have a lot of choice in how you play the game. Do you want a quick one-on-one, -on -one, two-minute match with no items? Go for it. Maybe a four-person battle royale with all items and ten stock each? Go for it. Or maybe you're itching for a two-on-two -two team battle that's over an hour long with only Pokeballs. What are you out of your fucking mind? That sounds awesome. With only 12 playable characters though, matchups do get pretty stale faster than the other games in the series, but for the first game in the series, it's still solid enough. But those characters are definitely a lot less agile than the later games. There's no side specials, no air dodging, and overall it just feels a lot more stiff to me. Honestly, it may be just because I'm using the N64 analog stick. I've never liked that thing. I'm probably just mentally scarred from playing a lot of Mario Party 1 as a kid. That wouldn't surprise me. And also, different topic, maybe this is just me too, but I also really like this game's menu music. The later games have this high intensity music that gets you really in the mood to fight, but this one, it's just sort of noise. It's very eerie and gives off a cool atmosphere, I love it. Yeah, I pretty much got as much out of this as I possibly could. Now, two years after the game released for the launch of the Nintendo GameCube, they released a sequel, Super Smash Bros. Melee. Now, I mean, it was only two years after that, so the graphics are probably a bit better, there's probably a few new tweaks to the mechanics, Bowser's on there, so there's probably a few new characters too. Should be kind of fun. Let's pop it in. Alright, we just gotta put a Melee in the good old Wii U. Oh, sorry, wait, it's the wrong way. Gotta put it in this way, and then, um... Oh, that's right, the Wii U can't play GameCube games thing. Alright, GameCube, here we go. Puff it on, put it in there, close the lid, put on the power, make sure it's nice and tight, and, uh, we're in the money! Oh, it's gonna be pretty good.
people.